All right, next let's look at setting up the uh, developer environment uh, for the Django project so that you are able to run the tests locally on your laptop, computer, whatever it is that you're using. Uh, now, in this case, I'm using a MacBook Air. So all the setup that I will be doing, it will be on Mac OS. Uh, so, but the steps are reproducible on different environments. You have to find out by searching on Google or Stack Overflow on how to go about it. And then you should be able to do it. Um, so let's start with how I do it on macOS. Now to be very honest, I see a lot of uh, questions around this particular area, around how to set up the local developer environment. Uh, but it is a one-time process, so just get through it. You know, Don't let this be a hurdle to your open source contribution for any project, not just Django. Now let's look at the steps in somewhat detail. Right? The first step is uh, Django, uh, the project that we are looking at right now, this runs across multiple Python versions. So as a developer for Django, I wanted to have ease of switching between Python versions, right? So I chose a, a tool called uh, PyENV. If you look up for it on Google, you'll see uh, PyENV, right? It's a simple Python version management utility. So I already have it installed on my laptop. So if I do PyENV version, uh, it says that I already have it installed. How did I install it? I, I ran brew, uh, install by env in this case it will say it's already installed so it won't do anything but if it was not installed it would go ahead and uh, install it for me right so it says by env is already installed and up to date so nothing uh, happens over there right uh, so now i chose by env because i used by env at work uh, and I've been using it for more than a year now. So I'm very familiar with all the nitty gritties of PyEnv and how it works, right? So if you use a different environment or if you prefer to use a different environment, you have worked with something else, feel free to use it. It's totally fine. Now, so the first step was to be able to use multiple Python versions so that I can test Django as a developer with different versions of Python, Python 2, Python 3, and so on, right? Now, the next step is you want to be able to use multiple versions of Django for each version of Python, right? So let's say if you're using Python 3 and you want to experiment something with Django 2.1 and then you want to switch to Django 3.0, right? So for that purpose, Python gives a utility called virtual env. It's a virtual environment, right? Uh, basically, it allows you to create isolated Python environments. It gives you a, a shell of an environment in Python in which you can go and install whatever Python packages you want, such as Django, and you can play around with it. Now, virtual env comes pre-installed uh, since Python 3.3. It's a part of the integrated standard library and so on using the venv module. However, because I have worked with virtual env and pyenv for a while, I'm comfortable with another utility called pyenv virtual env. Now, again, this is uh, my familiarity with the utility. You don't have to use PyENV virtual ENV. By all means, you can use the VENV uh, or you can use virtual ENV from PyPy, whatever it is that you want to work with, it's totally fine. Go ahead and choose whatever utility you find comfortable using. Now, if you want to use PyENV virtual ENV, uh, check it out on Google, see how to install it. Uh, it's quite straightforward in terms of the uh, steps to install it so it should not take too much of your time or bandwidth but let me go ahead and uh, run this command now in my case it's again already installed so it will just say it's already installed but i'll still just run the command to show what happens when you're trying to install it right so pi envy virtual envy is already installed and up to date nothing happens over there right so i have virtual env installed and i have pi env installed at this stage it means I can have multiple versions of Python and each in the and within each version of Python, I can have multiple versions of Django installed and it will all work for me well, right? Now the next step is using PyENV, I want to install a particular Python version, right? So my default system Python version, the one that comes pre-installed with macOS operating system that I'm using right now is Python 2.7.16 but you do not want to mess around with this version. You want to leave it as it is. Why? Because if you mess around with this version, it can disturb your system dependencies, 
it can impact how your mac os runs as an operating system it can cause some unforeseen issues with this right so i would recommend definitely leave it as it is do nothing to it now because we have py env installed i'm going to use py env install hyphen hyphen list to see the list of python versions available to me now there are different providers stackless pypy and so on what we want is the vanilla python the core python uh, for that just look at the numeric version number so the latest one is 3.8.2 uh, the a version is the alpha version and dev is the one which is currently being actively developed by the developers by the contributors of python right so we will look at python 3.8.2 that is the most recent version of python now you might want to experiment with older versions of python for testing something in your project like django for example which is totally okay uh, go ahead and install the older version in fact, we will install multiple versions for this purpose. So let me go ahead and install the most recent version, 3.8.2. Now it says uh, it already exists. Do I want to continue with the installation? I'm going to say no, because it's already there for me. But let's experiment with, let's say, installing pyenv uh, 3.6.6. Right? So that's how it goes there and installs. It gets the Python 3.6.6 from Python's own website. Uh, and starts installing and doing all the local stuff and so on. So we'll wait for this to finish installation before we move on to the next step. Actually, in a separate window, we can move on to next step. So now at this stage, if I look at PyENV uh, version, uh, actually see the versions to list all the python versions available to pyenv so if i do pyenv versions uh, these are all the python versions that i currently have 3.6.6 is being installed apart from that i have 359 3610 377 382 and so on right so now i have the python versions installed which i want to use with my django project i want to experiment with 35 36 37 and 38 Right? That's just the short form of saying 3.8.2, just call it 3.8. Uh, so Python version is available to me. Now let's go ahead and create a virtual ENV, a virtual environment using the Python version. Now you'll see I already have py3.8 Django dev. Now I'll create a different one using Python 3.8.2, but I'll name it slightly differently. Now I follow a naming convention when it comes to virtual ENV, it's your choice but it should be pretty obvious what kind of naming convention I follow. Basically it's py, pi, and then the full version without the dots, without the periods in it, and then hyphen and the purpose of that particular uh, Python virtual NIV. So if I'm using it for Django development, I just call it Django dev and so on, right? So let me create py env, uh, virtual env, and I'll use 3.8.2, and I will name it Pi 382 dev. Right? So I am asking Pi ENV to create a virtual environment for me using the Python version 382 and name that virtual environment Pi 382 dev. Meanwhile, uh, Python 366 is installed. So it's fairly straightforward. That's how you actually install different Python versions. You just say Pi ENV install and then the version number as we saw in the list earlier. Okay, let's come back to this one now. Now let's go ahead and create this virtual env. Right, so virtual env is created for me. Now if I do py env virtual envs to see the list of all virtual environments, I should be able to see py382 django dev which I just created right now, right? Um, so I have it right now. Now I am able to use this, I have it installed. Now, again, I would say be very cautious about the virtual environments that you create because over time, as you can see, I have I already have so many virtual environments and this is a relatively new laptop. And I'm basically, I mean, I reinstalled Mac OS, the recent one recently. Um, so you'll end up having lots of virtual environments, especially if you switch between multiple projects that you're working on and so on. So name it meaningfully so that you can see the purpose for it right by looking at the name of the virtual environment. Um, Okay, so that's about creating virtual environment and create and using PyENV to install Python. Now let's look at how do you activate a virtual environment, 
right? So currently we are still seeing Python version is 276. Now we want to activate this particular virtual environment so that we can see Python the version 382 when we run it. Now how do you activate it? You could say pyenv activate and then you say the name of the virtual env. So I'm just going to copy and then paste it. So the moment I do this, I see this prompt which says I'm currently in this particular virtual environment. Let me close this. So I'm in this particular virtual environment. Now inside this virtual environment, if I do Python version, it is Python 3.8.2. Outside it was Python 2.7.16, right? But if I deactivate it using the word pyenv deactivate, I come out of it and now if I again see the Python version, it is 2.7.16, right? So, so that's how you basically uh, switch between virtual environments. Now let me go back to my Python uh, virtual environment for 3.8.2. So here it is, right? Now you can also see which particular Python is being used by using pyenv which Python. So it says it is using from this particular pyenv versions 3.8.2 and then bin Python, right? Okay, so now at this stage, let's do a recap. We have pyenv installed, which allows us to use multiple Python versions. As you can see the list of versions that I have installed right now. And we have virtual env installed, which allows us to switch between multiple Django versions or whatever other projects that we want to work in, as long as they're using Python as the environment. Uh, and we saw how to activate and deactivate a virtual environment and how to see the Python version within that particular virtual environment. Now that is done. Let's move on to the next step. So our goal is to be able to do the developer setup, run the test locally on our laptop, right? Um, so for that, let's get the code on our laptop. We need Django's source code on our laptop. How do you do it? Uh, the first step is you go to Django uh, on GitHub. So just look up for Django on github.com. Once you are here, you click on fork. Fork basically gives you a replica of this particular repository, but within your own username namespace on github.com. If you don't already have an account, just sign up for it. In, my, in this case, I'm already signed up. So if I go to my profile, uh, this is my profile. If I look at my repositories, now there's a copy of Django within my own namespace, my own username. Right. So fork, it says forked from Django slash Django because I forked it from there. So now I have a working copy of Django in my own username on which I can do whatever changes I want. There are no limitations to it because this is my username. I own it, right? I own it as in I have access to it. So once you have forked it, you need to clone it, right? Uh, now cloning, you can use HTTPS or SSH. If you don't know what SSH is, for the simplicity sake, go ahead and use HTTPS to start with, right? Now, because I know what is SSH, I'm going to use SSH. Uh, so if I look now, I keep my all source code within a directory called git, which is inside my home folder, right? So if you look, it says tilde, tilde is the curvy slash, uh, it's like the curvy hyphen, and then there's a slash git, right? So if I do tree, oops, that was a mistake. Let me go out and then do tree. Okay, it's a mistake. Um, Sorry, uh, let's just look at ls, right? Let's just look at, uh, sorry. Okay, sorry for the mess up over there. So we are in git, right? Now if I do, I have Django as the only thing uh, over here. Now if I did not have Django, the step would be to clone this, right? How do you clone it? You just say git clone and then the link. Now. Don't use this exact same link. This is the link which corresponds to my username. Instead, you want to go to this particular page where you have forked the Django repository. Click on this button, green button, which says clone or download. Say use HTTPS if it is not already doing that. Copy this link and then paste it over here. So you say git clone and then this, right? When you do this, in my case, I'm not going to do it because I already have Django on my laptop and it will take some time because it's a big repository. I don't want to waste your time by cloning it again. But when you do this, it will go ahead and create a Django directory like this in your uh, local laptop, in your laptop, in your hard disk. Right, so we are out of it. So now we have cloned the repository. Now uh, let's go to the repository. Now we already have uh, Django dev over here, right? 
the next step is that uh, okay just for the sake of it let's just confirm that we are using the correct python version to be super careful python 382 okay now uh, you want to install the django developer version the version that developers are using right now which is actively being developed uh, in this particular environment now remember we are in this virtual environment we are not using the system python we are using the python which is inside this virtual environment how do you do it you say pip install and then the name of the uh, package usually you would say django but if you say django it will go ahead and fetch the latest version of django which is released to public instead you want to pass the package by its directory so say hyphen e and then dot if you want to understand what does hyphen e mean just check out pip install hyphen hyphen help over here if you search for hyphen e it will show you uh, install a project editable mode uh, basically developer mode so that you can play around with it as a developer right so we do pip install hyphen e and then we pass the link to directory which is dot as in the current directory and we let it install right at the end it says i'm using older version of pip so let's actually go ahead and also upgrade pip just to be on the latest version of pip right so now we have latest version of pip and we have django local installed the developer version for django uh, installed in our local environment now let's quickly check which particular version it gives if you want to check you can do python run it then say import django within python and then say django.get version it says 3.1 right now it says 3.1 over here but if you look at the latest version of django project you'll notice that the latest release version is django 3.0.5 why do we have 3.1 because 3.1 is actively in development and we cloned that repository locally on our laptop and we installed python from that repository that's why it says we have 3.1 okay so at this stage you have pyenv installed so allows you to do multiple python environments multiple python versions you have virtual env installed using which you can do multiple django versions if you want so you can switch out to a different virtual env and install a different version of django in that env if you want to play around a different version and you have the django developer uh, version which is 3.1 currently installed in your virtual env the one that you want to use for django dev right so let's come out of python uh, i used control d you can also type exit and come out of python shell uh, now the next step uh, actually i think the video length has been pretty long let's continue in the next video for the next step so that's it for this version uh, this particular video stay tuned in the next video we'll look at how to run the django tests locally on your laptop thanks and stay tuned